Hello, it's Wednesday, November 9th, 2016, and as of this recording, I'm still depressed, but I'm not dead. Well, looky there, I let another two weeks slide by before putting a podcast out, uh, I apologize. I think I have good excuse this time. Not that I guess my other excuses and reasons were invalid or not good. Um, I've actually been uh, these past, what, seven days, eight days now working on a NaNoWriMo book. For those of you who do not know, uh, November is National Novel Writing Month. It's a fun thing put on. I don't know if it's put on. It's not like a party, I guess. But uh, every, every November, you sign up at nanorimo.org, I believe. I'll make sure I put that in the show notes. Uh, and you kind of challenge yourself to write a novel completely and only within the month of November. And uh, their definition of a novel is 50,000 words. So that works out to be about 1,600, so between 1,600 and 1,700 words per day if you would like to keep on a tight schedule. So I'm, I'm giving it a whirl. I... Uh, tried this a while back uh, and I had a story idea. Pretty good one I thought, uh, but I petered out that time. I am resurrecting that story, kind of reworking it uh, because I really like the idea of the character and what's what's going on in the book. So uh, yeah, I'll tell you guys more about that later on. Uh, I'd really like to uh, get better than halfway through the, the book before I start putting things out there. Uh, So yeah, uh, that's been going on. A couple other things been going on. I've got uh, just some ideas popped in my head here. Uh, Nora is downstairs with the girl and they are kind of watching election results as I'm recording this uh, Tuesday, November 8th. Uh, So I just wanted to take this time to kind of get a hopefully get record a podcast and maybe edit it some tonight and get it done in the morning, send it out to you guys. So I apologize if I'm a little more rambling than usual. Uh, Hopefully I can pull it together and uh, make some kind of sense in the end. So, um, oh, real quick. uh, Remember, you can get a hold of me, uh, Jamolke, all over the internet. That's Jamolke at Gmail, Facebook.com slash Jamolke, Twitter at Jamolke, uh, I've still got that text line, kind of phone line. Uh, what is it? 248-648-1419. Go ahead and jingle that one up and leave me a voicemail if you like, or just send me a text message. Uh, I've gone back and forth with a couple folks and it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, so thank you guys for that. Um, what else do I have? Oh yeah, the webpage, uh, jamolki.info. That's J-A-M-O-A-L-K-I. So I guess that's it. Uh, We'll get right into the show. Ooh, so I was, (laughs) I, when I record, I do the, uh, the, the intro and then I do a gap. So I can put the music in and then I do that, you know, that little, uh, little tidbit in front and then a gap. And then I start in on the show here, like I am now. And during that short little gap between, uh, the, uh, the snippet there, uh, you know, when I say, Hey, let's get into it. I realized how fast I was talking, uh, during that opening part. Uh, I think maybe I'm a little anxious to get this, uh, I'll put down, so I can, I can have this recorded and edit it and get it put out. So yeah, so here I am, uh, you know, eight days into NaNoWriMo. Um, I'm still exercising, still running, still lifting weights. I am bordering on 30 pounds lost. So I, I promised myself and I told Nora when I get to that uh, whatever arbitrary benchmark of uh, 30 pounds lost. I'm going to treat myself to some grand old creamery, which is, uh, for my money, the, probably the best ice cream shop I've been to. And it's right here in St. Paul. Uh, it was visited by Barack Obama on one of his trips to Minnesota. There's pictures of him there. So, you know, if our first black president enjoys it, uh, I ought to be able to enjoy it as well. 
Uh, so hopefully within the next week, I'll cross that threshold and be uh, snacking on some ice cream pretty soon. So I mentioned I have just uh, just some ideas that have popped in my head this past week. And I don't, I don't really know that I'm going anywhere with them, but I, I just kind of want to get them out and maybe get some feedback from you guys. Uh, just, you know, random ideas and stuff. Um, first thing is, is I've met a new friend. We'll call him a friend. We haven't really talked that much, but why not? We can be friends. And it actually, it's been something I've been thinking about for a while, how, you know, I haven't really run into any people of color on this journey of mental illness. And I started noticing this a couple of weeks ago and I guess shame on me for not noticing it sooner. Um, but I, I don't know. But this gentleman that I met is, he's a, a black man um, and he has, you know, dealing with some mental illnesses. Uh, he just is a phenomenally nice guy and I really enjoyed kind of talking and listening to, you know, his story as he, you know, feels comfortable sharing it. And, but, you know, that's not the point to say, hey, I have a black friend now. <laughs> um, what Something he had said, which... I guess maybe it didn't surprise me, but it, it, it surprised me. Uh, he was, it was talking about how really in the black community, you know, black men, black women aren't supposed to have mental illness. He specifically said that uh, a lot of people he knows, uh, or I, I guess he said the black community in general will say, oh, that's, a, that's white people problems. We, we don't get that. And, and that was kind of surprising to me. You know, that's, that's a, a lot that I don't, know about and I think in general I'm pretty naive about really that kind of I don't know that kind of different ideology based along um, some arbitrary line like race and I'm, I'm so I'm pretty naive about that kind of those kind of things I generally assume everybody is good when I'm thinking in general and everybody is working to be educated working to have the um, greater good in mind in their day-to-day -day activities and that changes as I get down into individuals but it, I guess it never would have occurred to me that um, here 2016 um, planet earth that we've got folks here in America saying oh mental illness is not something black people get it's a white person problem and uh, it's seemed really strange to me it kind of stuck out um, I don't really know like I said, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know that it, there's there's something in there, right? There's meat in that. And I, I think there's an opportunity there to do some more educating. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of share that and get that out. Maybe maybe some of you, know, I guess, honestly, I, I don't know. I don't have any idea in demographics of who's listening to the show. You know, regardless of that, if, if, if you've kind of encountered this, if you have some ideas or thoughts on this, I would love to hear back from you. It's something I guess now is on my radar and uh, I, I guess I'll be, you know, it's funny how that works. Sometimes, uh, you know, you're oblivious to something and then um, like say, uh, you know, poodles are have curly hair, like you're oblivious to that. And someone opens your eyes and says, hey, poodles have curly hair. And then like all of a sudden it's, it's everywhere, right? You're seeing commercials with poodles with curly hair. You're hearing radio advertisements saying, Hey, poodles have curly hair. So I guess, you know, it, now that this is on my radar, um, I guess I admittedly, I have seen a little bit more in kind of my web searches and what I'm, what I'm doing online, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to me, uh, not interesting in a fun way, interesting in a, wow, this is this is wild kind of way. There's to that. Uh, I am grateful that I've uh, made a new friend and uh, hopefully, we, you know, we can kind of share our stories with each other and uh, make some progress here on our journeys. <laughs> you guys didn't see it and you didn't hear it, but I just had a major mental block on what I was going to talk about next. I kind of sat here for a few minutes. I hopped on the internet trying to figure out, get something to jog my memory. Um, and uh, lucky, fortunately enough, yes, uh, Facebook did the trick. Um, I, I want to talk about a little bit about how I've been feeling lately, um, what I think is going on the kind of worry and maybe even anxiety that is coming along with what I'm feeling and just generally just kind of moan and groan and complain about, um, you know, maybe what was me kind of stuff. Uh, I, 
I will admit that I think I am feeling a little bit better, um, maybe more than a little bit better, not, not, not greatly better, not all better, but I think that I'm certainly feeling more energy. Uh, I really do think my, my mind is a little bit clearer. I, you know, I just feel more <laughs> like, like a person, I guess. I don't know, uh, those of you who listen who um, don't have these kind of struggles, you're probably thinking, what, what's he talking about? Those of you who do uh, have similar struggles, um, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, I, I, I've been on this journey, this kind of uh, smaller, shorter journey of, of weight loss and um, better fitness. And you know, I told you I started in on doing some extra reading, trying to get uh, that that moving, starting up this NaNoWriMo thing again is engaging. And, you know, I, I would say over the past, for sure over the past couple of weeks, but even probably the past month, month and a half, I've been feeling kind of a, you know, general increase in positive mood, we'll call it. You know, this is good. You know, Nora has pointed out that She's seen some change in for the positive. Of course, she's uh, she's uh, biased a little bit as I'm I'm losing weight and turning back into the uh, hunk of hunk of love that she fell in love with. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, she's noticed. Admittedly, I don't spend a lot of time with other people who would probably have a, a fair assessment on on improvement or not. It's visible. It's it's clearly someone else is seeing it too, and that's good. Right. And I, I'm, I am glad for it. I'm, you know, kind of riding this wave. Uh, hopefully it keeps swelling and swelling and swelling. Um, you know, I've got, um, quite a few things going, I guess. Right. I mean, I got this podcast, I got the book, I got the fitness and the dieting, you know, I'm, I'm working towards, uh, work. So it's, you know, something that, that I still want to do. I don't, it's not realistic that I'm going to, uh, you know, take the world by storm uh, in this next year. But, uh, you know, I've started, started looking at that a little bit and, you know, with all this going on and you know, all this kind of good stuff, positive stuff, you know, I was thinking about what, where I'm at, where I've been, um, where I've come from in the past, you know, what are we at? 22 months now since my suicide attempt. And so, you know, with that is, you know, I, I see clearly how much stronger and better, I guess, um, uh, better. I don't like the word better because it makes me sound, makes it sound like, uh, those who are struggling more at any certain time are worse or better, better, but you know, better, stronger, um, clearly, you know, not even close to where I was when I first came to Minnesota, uh, not where I was even, you know, a month, two months ago, I guess. She's I'm awful with remembering pulling up time and, and, <laughs> and rel relative dates from where I am today. I'm not very good with that. Um, and, you know, that's, that feels good. That's, it's good. I mean, there's no other way to say it, right? It's good. So, you know, we're thinking about that and thinking back those 22 months, thinking back, you know, a year from right now, you know, you know, whatever, a year and a half, two, two years from ago, two, two and a half years ago. And I know I've mentioned on here before that, you know, by, by all accounts, I had dubbed 2014 as the year of me that I, you know, I went through quite a bit, uh, and most of it was good. And, you know, I, that's when I lost 50 pounds and I trained to run a half marathon and, I, you know, found kind of the strength, the energy, the confidence to kind of step back up at work and, and go for a promotion. And I did all that and it, it was great. I, you know, I was getting to know Nora and falling in love with Nora and all these wonderful things. And then it all went to hell, right? I mean, I, I went from being on top of the world to being as really as, as low as, you know, me, my person could get in just a matter of months. Uh, and so I, I think I have some, I have some trepidation. I have some worry, concern, maybe even I'm anxious about it, that it happened once. Can it happen again? Will it happen again? Is that, you know, if, if 
I don't know. Um, but it's it's very difficult. You know, pe- people were very good at recognizing patterns uh, for good or for bad. Um, and it's 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 really um, impossible for me to not see the analogy of what I'm doing now to where I was, you know, two and a half years ago. And I'm not, I don't want to come off and sound like that I'm, you know, uh, defeated or that I'm, um, you know, resolved. I don't know what I want to say that, uh, you know, I, I don't believe that I'm doomed to follow the same path. And I don't, and I don't believe that thinking about it is going to, you know, jinx it or, kind of steer me in that direction. But it's something I'm worried about. It does at times make me take pause in um, myself, in the decisions I make, the things I say. And I, I know that it's on my mind at times when talking about myself and when Nora and I are talking about the future, with what's going on next week, next month, um, how are you feeling? How's it going with therapy? Um, all those things. And, you know, there is a part of me that's really concerned that it could happen again. And, you know, there were different things going on than right now, right? Um, I, you know, I was falling in love with Nora and really wanting to be with Nora and really wanting to be with my girls. And it, well, early on, it was it was fine, right? Because it's kind of all that excitement, and you know, it's it's uh, hey, I'm falling in love, and she's wonderful, and hey, girls, I'm going to see Nora. You remember Nora? And yeah, it's great, exciting. But it gets it got to a point where you know the inevitable inevitable was staring me right in the face, um, even coming charging at me that I was going to have to make a decision that I couldn't. You know, it, for the relationship with Nora, it, it wasn't fair for it to remain the way it was. Me in Michigan, her here, me living with my, you know, my my wife, you know, legally my wife at the time. Um, so, you know, that I was going to have to make a decision there. And the decision that was going to be made there would take me away from my girls. And I there was just no way in my head that I could comprehend that that would work. Um, you know, there were some, some talks, uh, with Nora and, you know, at one point we were, she was actually looking for jobs in, you know, central Michigan area, um, which just blew me away that she would kind of even consider that, uh, you know, we didn't go very far and, and I, I think I tried my best to kind of talk her out of it. And, you know, her, her kids had always lived here. Her sister was here. Her mom was here. Um, you know, her husband, the kid's dad was here. You know, so it, that was a, a big move. And I, and I wanted to be sure at that time that we were really cognizant of what that all entailed. So, you know, towards, you know, going through October, you know, I had a lot going on. I was training for my half marathon and doing pretty well. I was, uh, you know, I'd gotten to a point where, it didn't surprise me anymore what I was doing while running. And, uh, you know, as a confident runner, I really believed that I had it, you know, I had a good, good handle on, you know, what it would take to run the half marathon. And I remember, uh, uh, you know, a, a couple times it, the idea of a full marathon kind of danced through my head, but I, I, I wasn't, but I wasn't that confident of a runner, uh, we'll say. And then, so we get to the thing that, you know, Facebook just reminded me of that it was two years ago today, November 8th, that I ran that half marathon. And, you know, I think back and I've done this quite a few times with my attempts to get back into running now, you know, I, I was so, I was so ready for that half marathon. I was, I was, you know, I I never considered myself a phenomenal runner and, and I, you know, I don't think anybody would ever accuse me of that. But when I look at where I am right now, yeah, I was, you know, I was, I was quite a pretty good runner and, you know, hopefully I get back to that. But anyway, so, you know, I ran the half marathon, Nora came out for that. Uh, My friend Dave came, uh, my mom and dad and my girls and, you know, and I got it done. And that was, I think I mentioned before that I, I, I never felt any, you know, I, I never felt felt that kind of good feeling that I should have gotten, I suppose, from 
you know, such an accomplishment. But the, the thing that was bigger than that was that I found myself that next day not sure what to do with that running time, right? I mean, I, I still did, you know, I still ran four miles, five miles, things like that, but I didn't transition into using or I guess using that time or, or identifying the next goal and you know it wasn't very long before I found myself just kind of impotent is the word that comes to to mind um, but really I felt like I just didn't really I felt like I didn't have a goal um, you know I was facing what seemed like an awful decision that would have to be made um, in my relationships you know um, looking back on it uh, I, I probably wasn't ready to go for that promotion uh, and part of thinking back on that is is kind of what's got my head kind of going around about what if maybe I do have some kind of anxiety or if it's just my borderline personality disorder that you know that the things I was seeing and and not uh, seeing but I wasn't knowing what was going on and you know if, for example you know I was really well thought of at work and this the Home Depot store I was working at and you know I I picked up on I pick up on things fast and I, I you know I have a pretty good working knowledge of of retail and what needs to go on and you know but part of being you know having a job is you've got supervisors you've got bosses who come around to ask questions want to know how things are going and anytime you know anybody asked me how things were going I felt um, really insecure. I felt like they knew something was wrong and they were testing me to see if I knew what was wrong. I was always worried that they were going to ask me the one question that I didn't have an answer at the ready for. Um, and I just felt, I just always felt kind of on edge when it came to that. And And kind of those questionings too were weren't necessarily from my, from my bosses, uh, you know, my, my peers, even, um, you know, people who, who worked for me, if, you know, when they had questions, I always felt like I was on the spot and that my answer wouldn't be good enough and that I would just, you know, flame out miserably. So those things were going on even up to, up towards the, the, the race. Um, but after the race, they were, you know, clearly a lot more, um, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, they, they were more frequent, uh, stronger, uh, more intense. I don't know. So, you know, then I found myself, you know, just kind of getting lower and lower and, you know, I'm pretty sure I've told the story, you know, woke up one morning, you know, had my first suicidal thought, went into work. Uh, Home Depot is fabulous. I got, you know, a short term leave um, FMLA. Uh, they're real supportive. And, you know, five weeks from then, you know, I was sitting in my car trying to uh, overdose. Um, and um, so, you know, yeah, that's not what's going on in my life right now. You know, I have a, you know, I've well, I haven't completely come to terms with being away from my girls. I think we're we're all working hard to make that work and for me to be the dad that or the the best dad that I can be given the circumstances of um geography. And you know, there's not that, you know, Nora is fantastic. We you know, it feels like we just get closer and closer as time goes on and you know, when I think that things are just great and she's the most wonderful person in the world, we have a conversation and she's even more wonderful and our relationship feels even better. So I don't, you know, that that kind of stressor is not here. So I, I you know, I recognize I'm not in the same spot, but the the, the correlations, the similarities are, are kind of beat me in the head. And I'll be honest, um, even this this book I'm writing is it's kind of equating itself with the the race and I'm a little bit worried come December first what what that's gonna look like when I'm not heading to the library for two hours, two and a half hours to 
work on you know this this book this these characters that I have in my head you know I I, I don't know it part of me wants to say hey you know geez, it's just you know it's it's silly it's if you got no you know hard data any evidence that that that's what you're headed towards and you know but my memory is still there my my memory of you know losing weight getting into running exercising uh you know lifting weights having a goal in mind and then that goal is accomplished and there's nothing else there so yeah um you know i i guess time will tell and you know i i can you know spend some time maybe you know i don't know but i don't know how to pre-plan that to say okay come december 1st i'm going to i actively i need to have an idea of of what i'm going to do next and you know how i'm what am i going to do to you know occupy my time um that's being occupied right now by by the writing yeah i don't know i was asked uh i've reached out to some folks online trying to get I, you know i was asking different people uh geez <laughs> sorry uh, um you know i've it, part of the the story that I'm writing had you know I really want to make it as close to realistic as possible. Even though I've the crux of the story is kind of based in fantasy, I would like everything else to be as um, close to reality. And so you know I've had you know there's injuries involved, and I've kind of reached out to some groups, um, kind of you know doctor groups, nurses nurses groups, saying hey you know if you got a minute I'd like to bounce some ideas off of you. Uh, and I've had a couple of people um, respond and I've had some good conversations. And this one person, you know, after, you know, I don't know, day three, I guess, of writing, uh, they asked me what, you know, what's, <laughs> I think it was, you know, is this, is writing your thing or is this just a hobby? Is this your gig or what? Uh, and I responded that, you know, it's, it's a 30 day distraction is what it is. I think it's fair to look at it that way. Um, I also think it's fair to say that that it's okay for that to be to look at it as that. You know, I guess it's just okay to to view this as a distraction, and you know, hopefully it it becomes more than a distraction. You know, I, I part of me kind of enjoys figuring out the story. Uh, I don't know that I'm a very good storyteller, but uh, yeah, um, I'm completely off the rails here. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Don't know how to piece this back into any other part of what I've talked about. So I'm going to put you all out of your misery and wrap up the show right now. <laughs> um, as always, please uh, send me some feedback, send me some ideas. You know, I, 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 I want to learn more. Send me, you know, let's, let's have a conversation. Be, be my next distraction. That would be great. I would, I would really, really, really enjoy that. Again, thanks everybody for taking the time to listen. Um, hopefully I didn't make any of you go mad uh, with my ramblings. So uh, I'm rambling again. So I'll just say farewell. Uh, everybody, thanks for listening. Be safe and be well. Mm -hmm.